Uh, thank you all. Um, thanks for convening this panel. Um, very important timing. Um, given uh, I've been reporting from the Donbass, that's what I'm going to speak about now. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that prior to February 24th of this year, Ukraine, um, just prior, like in the weeks prior, Ukraine had significantly increased its already routine eight plus years shelling of the Donbass. Um, as I mentioned, I've been reporting from the Donbass and Lugansk People's Republic this year, and uh, I, I go down, I spend three weeks there, I come back here to my home in the Moscow Oblast, I go back for three weeks, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been back, back and forth uh, six times this year. Every time I've been there, the Ukrainian shelling has intensified, um, and it's, it's no longer on the peripheries, it's in the very heart of the city. Um, and it's striking absolutely non-military areas. It's striking completely residential, commercial, civilian areas, busy streets, sidewalks, parks, playgrounds, um, apartment blocks. Uh, a few days ago, maybe two days ago, around 7 a.m., the people in Donetsk woke to 40 Grad missiles fired simultaneously by Ukraine again on the city center. It was a catastrophic scene, uh, pillars of smoke everywhere. A friend of mine sent me photos of an apartment building right near where he was renting. And it's uh, the photos he sent were you know, showing a, a lot of destruction. Um, and that place was just two minutes from an apartment I've rented on my past three visits. Um, and I can attest that it is a completely residential area. There's no military targets there whatsoever. This is purely continued Ukrainian terrorism and Ukrainian war crimes. This morning, Ukraine started bombing at 2 a.m. and resumed at 8 a.m. On Wednesday in Donetsk, there's a press conference. The Joint Center for Control and Co Co Coordination, excuse me, said that since mid-February, over 4,500 Donbass civilians have been killed by Ukraine's shelling. Now, in April, I wrote an article and I was looking at um, GPR and LPR, so Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic sources, about the number of civilians killed from 2014 on. And at that time, it was around 8,000, not, not talking about military, civilians killed by Ukrainian shelling and, and sniping. That was around 8,000 in the two republics. And now, since mid-February, another over 4,500 4, civilians have been killed. That's It's staggering. And of course, we're not hearing about that in the media at all. Um, so as I mentioned, I've been going to, every every time that I've been in the, in in Donetsk and around uh, other cities, Gorlivka, Ukraine has intensified its shelling, um, and war crimes that were were at the Russian side doing it um, would would be twenty four seven on corporate media. In June, Ukraine's shelling of the center of the city included hitting the roof of a maternity hospital. Thankfully, women, the, the patients and the staff had already vacated to the basement because the, the shelling that day was so intense. Um, in late July, I might have already addressed this uh, to you in a previous panel, but in late July, it is important to emphasize that the shells um, containing hundreds of petal mines that Ukraine fired in late July continued to plague the civilians of, of the Donbass, uh, the Donetsk People's Republic. Um, as, as of early November, 87 civilians have been maimed by these mines, which are designed to tear off limbs, um, not to kill. In November, when I was back in Donetsk, I interviewed a 14-year-old teen whose foot was blown off. He was going to visit his grandmother, and he stepped on a mine in a playground. Um, and this boy used to do um, breakdancing and mixed martial arts. These mines are so insidious, and Ukraine signed the Ottawa Convention prohibiting their use and pledged to destroy them, but has not done so. In August, uh, Ukraine's bombing of the center of the city included right next to a hotel I was staying in at the time, killing a woman that was walking the sidewalk, and then shelling also a, a street or two away killed five other people, um, tore them apart, and these were with NATO weapons. Um, in September, when I returned, in just five days, Ukraine's shelling killed 26 civilians. One of the districts I went to, um, 13 civilians were killed. In, in one area of that neighborhood, nine civilians were killed. And it was a nightmarish sight, uh, their bodies or parts of their bodies um, strewn along the street. And these, these, again, bear in mind, it's not just journalists and Donbass residents that are seeing this, it's children as well. Imagine how scarred these children are from the shelling and from seeing such gruesome sights. 
in November, when I returned, uh, the morning after I returned uh, at 3.30 a.m., Ukraine fired using HIMAR system, fired shells on the center of the city, um, targeting an administrative building. Thankfully, nobody was killed. I went there. It was just two blocks from the apartment I was renting. I went there, and uh, some hours later, the fires were still burning. And I walked around uh, to apartments next door and I found somebody to talk to, uh, a young mother. And she said that after the first uh, sounds of bombings, she grabbed her toddler and ran for the toilet. If she hadn't done so, the kid would have been maimed at best or killed because she found shrapnel and glass on his bed. So um, needless to say, I've seen, without exaggerating, dozens and dozens of dead civilians in, in Donetsk, uh, all a product of Ukraine's shelling of civilian areas, often with Western weapons. You might <laughs> see this flag here. Um, it is the DPR flag. Um, now, I know that Western media who frequently uh, pose with Nazis or Al-Qaeda in Syria or et cetera, et cetera, will take issue with me having this flag in the wall. But for me, it's, it's personal. Um, the Donbass is somewhere that's become very dear to me. But also this flag, it represents to me the resilience of a people uh, who the whole world, almost the whole world, has ignored, has shunned the genocide of their, their people. Um, or if they've been mentioned, they've been ridiculed um, as though their lives are not worthy. And of course, we know that's not the case. Um, my colleagues and I document Ukraine's crimes against Donbass civilians because it's important to do so. It's important that this be known, but also so that eventually, ideally, Ukraine will be held accountable for those uh, manifold war crimes. Um, I hope I know you are all over in the States working very hard to change things, to bring an end to this uh, U.S. proxy war against Russia, in which Ukrainians and uh, ethnic Russians in Donbass are being killed. Um, and I hope that we can change the discourse so that it's no longer uh, whitewashed what Ukraine is doing, but we can speak very openly about the fact that Ukraine is committing genocide. Thank you.